Hi, my name is Julia Silgi, and I'm a data scientist and software engineer at our studio. And today in this video, we're going to use this week's Tidy Tuesday data set about um, college tuition and the diversity of colleges in the United States and build a predictive model. Um, in this uh, video, we're going to concentrate on how to set up data pre-processing steps using the recipe packages package and we are going to um uh, show how to concentrate on how to use uh, resampling as a method to uh, compare different kinds of models so let's get started Okay, here we are. We are going to, in this video, we're going to show how to um, work with the, using the tidy models framework, uh, do a little bit more um, pre-processing than we have done before, and focus on resampling and how we can use resampling to evaluate models. This week's Tidy Tuesday data set is about um, U.S. Um, colleges, universities in the United States, and some of the data is about um, uh, tuition at those universities, how much it costs to go to them, and um, other characteristics of these universities. And then some, uh, we also have information about who attends these universities in terms of the diversity of the student body. So let me get pasted in here um, the the um, how, just the reading in these uh, this data and let's take a look at it here. So I'm going to use there's several data sets this week and I'm going to use two of them. So the first one is this uh, tuition data set so like the cost of tuition. So it has the name of the university, where it is, um, is it a public or private or I believe um, uh, for profit school. Um, the um, is it a two-year or a four-year school? And then these data sets about uh, how much it costs for um, in-state and out-state, out-of-state uh, students, um, uh, tuition only, and then a total cost, which would be um, how much does it actually cost to go there, um, including fees and other things. And what I like about uh, using this um, here is that this is similar to a lot of kinds of real world data problems because you end up with um, a lot of these different uh, uh, variables and like we know that those things are related to each other, right? Like a place that has high in-state tuition probably has high, mostly high out-of-state tuition, right? And hey, the tuition and the total are probably related to each other. Um, uh, and it, we we probably know like if we put all of those into the model, depending on the kind of model we have, um, this is going to, um, like it's too correlated. These things are too correlated with each other. And like how, w how can we deal with that? Some kinds of models are not sensitive to this, but um, uh, a lot of kinds of models are, especially the kinds that um, we probably can use for this kind of, um, this size data set where we have this many um, variables. Um, the other data set we're gonna use here is this uh, data set about uh, the div uh, the makeup of the student body. So we have names of the universities, the total enrollment, how big they are total, where they are, and then of different categories of um, students, um, what is the enrollment of those? So uh, one of the categories, I believe, if, well, let me see if I can roll down, down here a little bit. So if I take this, um, um, I believe one of the categories, I looked at this ahead of time, is um, total minority, like this. Um, so we have this for each of these uh, universities that's in this data set. So it is uh, for, what, for however um, minority students are being characterized in this, um, in this data set, it has the total. So um, of course this is very interesting, it would be very interesting and important to um, understand um, for students um, who are black or students who are Hispanic or, um, or Asian, like um, what, what are the relative uh, proportions in different places. For the model that we're going to um, be building here, let's look at the total minority um, uh, population and uh, use that as a variable. So which, um, which, which uh, uh, student bodies 
um, have a, a higher proportion of total minority students as a whole. So let's make a new variable called, um, let's call it total minority, and let's make it enrollment divided by total enrollment, like this. And let's call this, um, let's just call this diversity school. So we made, we made a little, um, we, we create, basically we created another feature here. We did a little bit of some feature uh, engineering here. And let's, um, let's see how that is distributed for the data sets that we have in that, um, in this, um, in this, uh, the, the universities we have in this data set. So let's look at that uh, total minority. And oops, oh, classic, classic mistake. Um, let's make a histogram um, and see what this uh, distribution looks like here. So that is a nice shape there. We can see that, um, oh, it's trying to re-render here. There we go. Um, okay, um, so we see this peak around, you know, point, I don't know, um, around eight, you know, 18 percent, 15 or 18 percent, and then um, we see we have students all the way to 100 percent. Um, you know, there are in the United States there are historically um, black colleges um, who serve uh, HBCUs who serve. You know, like we have a we have a distribution here, but there's a big peak. So let's find out what the um, uh, we, l what I let's let's build a model that is going to say. Um, uh, hey, what can we use to um, understand um, uh, or to predict w uh, what what would make what what uh, what is related to colleges having more students, uh, more minority students, uh, racial and ethnic minority students, and what is related to um, universities having um, a lower proportion of racial and ethnic minority students. And can we understand, based on the other things we know about the universities, um, how, how that's related? So we know things about, for example, um, in the, in the um, tuition costs, we know things about the, the tuition, the degree length, the type, and can we understand which of these things um, are related here? So let us, um, so in, so if we've got this diversity school, that, that total minority, let's, let's find out what the median is. What's the median there? Uh, so the median value is about 30, about 30%, so in the US, about 30, the median value for a university, um, for a, any, like in the US for a college is about 30%. So let's, let's build a, um, a data set we're gonna use for modeling. So let's take diversity school and let's um, uh, transmute this. So let's make, um, let's make a new value called, uh, a new variable called diversity, and let's use case when, d pliers case when, and when total minority is greater than 0.3, which is close to the median, let's call that a, um, a high, minor, um, a high minority um, school and the rest of the time let's call that a low minority school and then uh, uh, what else do we want from there let's take the name let's take the state and let's take the total enrollment because maybe big schools or small schools are more likely to have more um, minority students and then let's take um, uh, tuition cost and let's take some things from here. So we are going to interjoin with um, uh, this um, this tuition cost data set and what are we going to take from it? Let's we d we're going to match up again uh, by the name. Um, most of these uh, are uh, this is from the same the most of this comes from the same place. So fortunately, we're just going to match up on strings and um, do, that works pretty well. Um, let's take the type, whether it's public, private, or for profit. Let's take the degree length. Um, um, let's take, and then let's take, um, 
let's take uh, all those tuition uh, values. To, uh, so in-state tuition to out-of-state local, total, total, sorry. And um, we're going to take all of them because I don't know which one to use for the modeling. So we're going to take all of them and then we're going to use pre-processing to choose which one to do. Um, the other thing is there's, there's a ton of states in this right now, in fact. 50 states, all the states in the United States. And that's, um, I don't know, that's like, that's too much. But I would like to, I would, I, I think that's not going to be useful for the kind of modeling I want to do. But I would like to kind of get some um, regional information here. So there's, um, there's a couple things built into R that can help us here. So it's state, um, Let's, let's state region. So notice this is a vector that, or uh, like a factor vector that's built into R. It's of length 50, and um, so it's in it's for the states in alphabetical order. So if you do state name, it's in the same. It's the same. Um, so let's make a little let's make a little tibble that has. Um, so we have it called as state here. So let's say state equals state name and let's call it region equals state region like this so now we have a little tibble and let's let's um uh let's left join or i guess it could be an inner join too because it's we have all the states like this um like so and now we have the the name and the state so we and we have a region as well. So now we have a region and that's, let's use that for modeling instead of state. So let's model by region instead of by state. Okay, so now we don't need state anymore and let's get rid of name um, uh, because we're not really interested in like the, the school to school differences. We're not gonna use that. We could keep it around as an ID variable. We can talk about how to do that another time. Um, so uh, uh, one thing that is useful to do whenever we do modeling is to change every character um, uh, variable to a factor like so. And so this is what we're going to use for modeling. Let's call it university DF. So this is our this is our thing that we're doing. Let's look at it. Um, very nice. Let's do a quick skimmer skim so we can see what we've got here so let me uh click that down so we've got um nine columns so we're gonna one of those is going to be our outcome the thing we're predicting it is diversity um we have um two two let me push this over a little bit and do this one more time it's easier to read now. Okay, so we've got, well, a little bit easier to read. We, okay, so uh, we've got low and high, and it's, we don't have too bad of imbalance here, of course, because we picked the median. Um, we've got public, private, and for-profit in type, four years and two years, and then we've got these, we've got these four regions, south, north, east, north, central, and west. So that's the, the regions in the US that we have. We've got these numeric things. Um, total enrollment, which, um, see these nice little inline histograms? That one is, that one is distributed um, really, uh, um, uh, really, really, you know, all, all the numbers are mostly small with a few enormous ones. And then the tuitions are all here, and I don't know which one to use. So we're gonna, we're gonna show how to fix that using um, a recipe step. And you can see those are distributed, um, not so everything else squashed up out, out of the bottom. Oh, wait, I, I was looking, here it is nicer. Gosh, that, I did that on purpose <laughs> to make it bigger. Okay, yeah, so here you can see that in a print, nicer printed way. So low, high, um, and here are these nice little inline histograms with the mean and the distributions and all this, which is so nice from Skimmer. Okay, um, let's just do a quick couple of, um, uh, uh, exploratory plots before we get started so that you can see what we um, have here. So for example, let's look at, um, let's look at, what should we look at? Let's look at type. Let's look at this public, private, 
Um, so p type and for profit. So, and then let's see, uh, I don't know which one. Let's just pick in-state tuition here. And uh, let's do fill equals diversity, diversity. And um, let's make a box plot like so. And let's, let's, uh, Make this so you can see it better. Okay, so here, <clears throat> so went for so high diversity universities tend to have lower tuition. So students who are minorities are more likely to be found at schools with lower in-state tuition, um, and that's true at for-profit schools private schools and public schools. We can, um, it's sometimes nice, it's for something like this to uh, um, scale Y, continuous, make those labels into dollars because that's what they are, um, and kind of see where those medians hit for the for-profit and the private and the public. That's kind of nice to be able to see how different that is. Um, we could, you know, yeah, we could make the Anyway, yeah, so, and if we want, we could, um, we could facet wrap by a region. If we want to see, um, like the data starting to get, you know, not as big now, but we can see, do we see that same relationship in all the four regions? And it looks like, it looks like that we mostly do. We mostly do. All right, we can do the same. Let's, uh, let's copy that. Uh, let's get rid of Let's at least not do the facet wrap for region for now. So instead of um, in-state tuition, let's just change this to en enrollment and see if we see a difference. And let's, uh, obviously these are no longer dollars. Um, so what do we, s oops, that was, oh, uh, I have to get rid of the, the plus. Um, okay, <coughs> um, so we have a, Oh uh, gosh, okay, I'm getting scale Y. So um, this is a little hard to see. So let's, uh, let's unsquash everything down from the bottom with the log scale. Um, okay, so do, are, do schools that have a higher proportion of, t of minority students, are they bigger? They are bigger at the, so in the public school, and the for-profit school, eh, they look about the same for the private school. So this is like a, when we see a different effect by, like this for these different predictors, we might wanna try, like we'd either build an interaction in or maybe try like a tree, a model with trees or something like that that's good at learning it. So I don't know, maybe we'll give that a go. Okay, so that, but it's, it's only true for one of them, so I'm not sure, and it's hard to know how big of an effect that is. So anyway, so that's some of our exploration that we did there. So, the ne so now we're ready to start building some models. So let's do this. Let's get ready to build um, m um, some models. So we're gonna load the tidy models meta package. So the tidy models meta package has, um, you know, all these different things in it. Um, and we are going to um, start out by splitting our data. So we're gonna set a seed um, and we are going to use the function initial split. So we're splitting the, the data, the whole data, and we can split it um, uh, with some strata. Uh, let's split it with our, our outcome variable, diversity, so that we have about, I mean, it's pretty, it's not very uneven, but let's put that in there anyway, so that we make sure we have about the same um, out, the same proportion of t um, low and high minority schools in the, um, in the training data and the testing data. So let's call this uni split. And then we can make, we'll make our training data, uni, uni train with training, the function training um, on the split. And then uni test on the split. So what this does is, um, so the split 
it just uh, what it this is of type split is a split and it is saying okay from everything everything that we have in the first data set which things go into the testing data and which things go into the training data so it keeps track of which things go where and then the training um, uh, um, function actually goes in and gets the ones that belong in the um, in the training data and gets you the data here. So we have, um, oh wait, I did, I told you a little backwards. This is the whole data set. This is the training data. This is the testing data. Sorry if that was confusing. Um, okay, so this is the training and then this is the test data. So we split it um, three quarters, one quarter. Um, that's the default. You can change that if you would like. All right, so now it is time for us to do our data pre-processing. So we use a function called recipe to do our data uh, pre-processing. So a recipe, think of a recipe as um, all the steps you need to do to get your data ready for modeling. So, uh, so what do we have here so far? We've got, we've got our outcome. So the first, the first thing you do in a recipe is you say, um, uh, what, what do we want to model? So we want to model um, diversity, whether a college, a university is high or low, explained by everything else that we're gonna, that we decide to use. And then um, we tell it the data that we're gonna use to do this. In this case, it's the training data. We wanna send it the training data. And now, um, now we have to decide what we're gonna do with all this. What are we gonna do with all this? So um, we have, we have um, factor data. Um, depending on the kind of model we use, we, we might need to choose, need, we might need to convert these factor levels into um, dummy variables. Um, also, we've got, we've got these four versions of tuition and we definitely don't want to put all of them in to the model at once, especially we're gonna, we're gonna start out with a, um, with a um, logistic regression model and um, uh, it's not a good idea to put like super correlated variables into something like that. So, um, and if we wanna try say like, um, you know, something like, um, say we wanna try logistic regression, k-means and then uh, a decision tree. Um, we, we need to do several different kinds of data pre-processing. We, we, we wanna get rid of things that are so correlated. We, we need to know what we need to um, keep and we need to convert things to dummy variables uh, if we want to use um, uh, uh, k-means. And also we would need to um, uh, center and scale. We need to normalize uh, if we wanna use k-means. So let's start doing that. Um, let's uh, do... Let's do step core uh, first. Um, so we can say uh, all numeric like this. So let's, let me just show this to you. Right now, this isn't doing anything yet. It's just, um, uh, it's not doing anything to the data yet. It is just saying, what have you set up? What have you set up? And it's like, oh, okay, you're gonna, you're gonna filter on things that are correlated together. Um, and you're not only, you're not gonna keep them all. And then let's, um, let's uh, uh, change to dummy variables. Uh, let's do that for the things that are nominal. That means the, for us, that'll be the things that are factors, but we don't want to do it on the outcome, our outcome. So we don't want to do that. Uh, it, for safety sake, I don't think there's anything in here that has zero variance, but um, let's let's uh, get it out. We can now say all numeric because after step dummy, everything will be numeric. And let's um, let's normalize. So let's, this is centering and scaling. Um, if we want to um, uh, say we want to use k-means, uh, okay. So let me run this and show you. It still was super fast because it still is not doing anything. It's just setting up the steps. It's saying, here are the steps that I'm going to do. The step, the next um, thing that I add here does, um, does actually go to the data and learn from the data what steps do I need to do. So let's look at what this is. Now it says, okay, 
I know now what what I actually did. So what did it do? On the cor so on the correlation filter, it removed in-state tuition, in-state total, and out-of-state tuition. So of those four variables for the tuition, it only kept out-of-state total. That's the one that it it kept. Uh, it changed these to dummy variables. Uh, like there, there weren't anything that were all the same, but then that's uh, you know that's as expected. And then it centered and scaled all of the variables that were numeric, which at this point is all of them. Um, so this is what the uh, this is what the recipe says. If you want to say, hey, what actually what actually does the data look like after I do this? You can get the data out with the juice function. So juice says, go to the recipe and tell me um, what does the data look like after I get it. Um, so notice here we've got, um, we have got, uh, so diversity is still in here as a factor. Everything else now notice is a double. Everything has been converted to numeric. Um, these, these values, instead of being um, ones and zeros, they have been converted to, they've been centered and scaled. Um, they, we don't have all those tuition things anymore. We only have one out of state total. So this is what the data looks like now. Um, juice uh, is, is equivalent to bake. Um, uh, the, re the recipe where the new data is the uh, the train. So juice is like a special case of bake um, for for the data that it was trained on. We can also bake the test data, and we'll need to do that later. So that's so baking applies the recipe to the data that you want to use. And so this is this is how we say, um, hey, I want to do the same pre-processing on my test data that I do on our train data, data, we do it with the bake function. Juice is special because it is the data that the, um, that the, the recipe used um, to learn from. Okay, so we have done uh, pre-processing and now we can set up some models. Uh, let's, uh, let's, let's start with, let's start with um, logistic regression. Uh, so logistic regression, and we're just going to do plain vanilla um, logistic regression. So let's say we would do it like this. Let's call, so this is a, this is a, uh, a model specification like this. And if we, um, we can fit a model specification by saying um, diversity explained by everything. And then we give it the data. In this case, we, let's say, let's give it that juiced data like so. And we can say, um, let's call that GLM fit, like this. So this is how we would fit uh, to the training data for, um, for, uh, for the logistic regression model. So we can say, okay, um, it looks like um, in the, um, uh, in the um, north central, it is I believe because of the direction this is, like the West and the South have more um, minority students. The four-year schools have less. North Central has less. The um, higher tuition is. Uh, there's less minority students. So we, we're, we can get the coefficients out, which is, um, of course, nice with logistic regression. We can see what we, what we mean. Um, so we can, we can, Let's just copy this whole thing. And let's say we want to do um, a nearest neighbor model. So we can say um, uh, uh, KKNN here. And nearest neighbors can be used to flit, um, fit either um, classification or regression. So we need to say what the, um, what the uh, mode is. And then this will be here, but everything else stays the same. And that is one of the wonderful things about tidy models is that um, we have a consistent interface to all of these models. So now we have fit this one. So that's how we fit um, a nearest neighbor model using the same um, data. And we can do the same thing. Let's say we wanted to do a decision tree. So we would, we would change this to decision tree 
and change this art the engine to our part which is the um uh the ed, you know the the r package that runs uh, this decision tree and this let's call it a tree spec so this is an, a model specification and the rest of this is all the same like so i did this three times which means i probably should write a function i'm not going to in the interest of time okay so and we get actually out the some of these some of these nodes um so we can see like oh look the first um node here like this so so here's the root how many are low um and high um so this is the is it, it the first the split the first split is is the region north central um and if it is uh if it is then or if it's not then um it is more likely to be high if it is it's more likely to be low and then in the north central region you look at um the tuition out of the north central region you s look at tuition and then you s or no yeah tuition and then you look at other regions anyway so it's like a decision tree like this so you can see that's what these nodes mean like you go through it you know you go you go through the nodes of the tree figuring out how to make how to make a decision all right, so that is how, that's the idea of how we do models, uh, how, we, how we fit models here. Wonderful, we fit models, isn't that great? But how do we know which model is good? How do we know which, what, which model is good? We could predict back on the training data and um, see what we get. However, um, that is a bad idea because um, we these models were trained on the training data and depending on how powerful the machine learning algorithm is that you use if you predict back on the training data um, you get a very um, optimistic view of how well your model does we could predict on the test data to compare these three models but you, re you only get one chance of predicting on your test data before it loses its uh, it loses its ability to tell you something. And I don't think we should squander our test data in that way. We, we need to save our test data and predict on it one time at the very end with one model, I mean two at the very most, right? Um, to say, to use the test data to estimate how well our model will do on um, new data. So, so what are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? You probably know, because it says right here, we're gonna do resampling. We're gonna use resampling. So uh, resampling uh, can, is a, is a way to um, simulate how well your model is gonna do um, in, uh, when exposed to new data. So we're gonna create a set of cross-validation folds here. So we, let's use, um, let's use uh, uh, the juice function to get out that um, that pre-processed data and we can again there's there you can use strata here as well which is nice so this let's let's call this folds so there's gonna be there's gonna be 10 here let's look at them so there's 10 folds you can again you can change that there's there's options in here if you need more or don't need as many um so the, there are splits here so the splits are like the split for um tech t training and testing except that they are uh they're they're arranged differently so they're um they're instead of splitting 75 25 these are split um 90 10 um, so this is this is um, the ninety percent. We would call that the analysis set, and this is one sixty three. That's the assessment set, and we call this fold one, and and so forth and so on down here. So we've got ten cross validation sets, and what we're going to do here is we're going to fit the model to this, evaluate it on this fit the model on this, evaluate it on this, and so forth and so forth down here. And then we're gonna measure how well our model does on all of these assessment sets. 
and use that information to uh, an average, we're gonna average across all of these, and use that information to assess how well these different models do. So we're gonna fit each model 10 times. We are not gonna keep those models because those models aren't useful um, uh, like the, the parameters of those models aren't useful. What's useful is the performance of those models. So we don't even keep those, we don't even keep them around. Um, we're only doing this fitting for the purpose of evaluating how well the models are doing. If, if we decide one of these is the best, then we go back and we, we fit on the whole training data because that will give us because more, da more data is better. More data is better when we're fitting a model. So this is only for the purposes of evaluating how well the model is doing. So let's do this. Okay, so this, um, this does have uh, randomness. So we, it's good to set a seed. Um, um, so let's, we can take the specification, the model specification, and we can use a function called fit resamples. So let's, um, uh, so we're piping in a model, and then we can, um, uh, let's see, we can give it a formula like this, and then we can give it data, the, which for us is the folds. And um, let's say, so for this, the default metrics it would give us would be um, area under the curve and um, accuracy. But let's say, you know, overall accuracy, it's not, that's not very, um, that's not always the number you wanna know. Let's say we're actually interested, um, we, can, we can say, um, I am interested in um, uh, more, um, more fine-tuned metrics. Let's say, let's say we do want, um, we do want area under the curve of the ROC curve. But let's say I also want um, sensitivity and specific specificity. Um, so that's how you say which metrics to keep track of is by um, using the metrics argument like this. And then um, we, we, we do want to make some, um, uh, we do want to make ROC curves ourselves. So be, to be able to do that, we're going to say control resamples and we're going to say, hey, hey, save those predictions for me like this. So this is uh, the reason, so this is fit resamples. The reason we're adding this argument is because we want to keep sensitivity and specificity and we want to be able to compare those. <clears throat> does, the, does the logistic regression model or the um, k-means model or the classification tree, do the, does one of them do better on sensitivity or specificity than the others? And then we're saving our predictions because we want to make a ROC curve. So let's call, oops. Let's call this the result, like so. Let's run that. And then uh, we're just going to do the same thing. Or let me show you what it looks like. So it's a tibble here. We've got the splits and the fold, the splits and the ID with the fold. That's what we had before. The metrics are um, uh, not the metrics are. Um, the, for each fold, what was the sensitivity, the specificity, and the, A, the AUC. Um, notes, or is this something went wrong? You can see there's nothing in these because fortunately for us, nothing went wrong. And then the predictions is um, for everything that was in that, um, for every little observation that was in that split, what is the predicted probability that it's a high minority university, low, and then um, what was the real, so what's the predicted class, what's a hard probability, hard prediction, hard probability prediction, and then what is the real answer? And then where did it come from in the original data set? So that's what we get out here. So let us um, do the same thing for the um, K, means, let's call it RS, like so, and everything else is the same. And then we're gonna do the same thing for um, the decision tree. Tree spec, and let's call this tree result, like this. And run that. Okay, tree result. 
We have some functions in tidy models. It actually comes from Yardstick, one of the function, one of the packages in Yardstick, to conveniently you can you know you can um, unnest predictions or and do this averaging yourself. But there are just some uh, some uh, convenience functions here, so we can see. So for the tree, for the decision tree model, the here's the um, area under the curve, the sensitivity and the specificity. We can do the same thing for the k-means model. All right, so k-means is better area under the curve, so probably better overall accuracy, but worse on sensitivity, same specificity. And then let's do um, uh, 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 logistic regression. And again, again, it looks like the decision tree did better on sensitivity and the best specificity is the, um, the logistic regression. So that's why, so this is, this is a case where it is interesting to look at, um, sensitivity and specificity because depending because in most in most real world use cases um, overall accuracy is not um, you know is not actually the thing you care about the most um, uh, it, it usually makes a difference in like in your business use case or like in a clinical situation like it makes a difference whether you're getting thing something wrong in a true positive sense or a false positive sense and so understanding does some pr particular model that you have do better it, does it have a higher sensitivity or specificity is an important thing to know. And so this right here is how you set that up so that you can see it. Okay, so let's um let's let's show how to make a um how to make a, a an ROC curve so we can look and see that. Let's see that see some of these uh, relationships. Um so we're going to unnest um the predictions. And let's call this, let's give this a new um, um, a variable, a new column called, let's call it GLM. And then we're going to bind rows and we're going to take this same thing. Whoops, a daisy. And we're going to put, let's put the tree. And let's call that tree. And then we're going to bind rows. And we're going to put the k means k and n. And let's call it k and n. OK, so, we, so we're binding all the predictions together. And we added a, a column called model so that what we can do next is we can group by model. And we can use the function ROC curve like so, and we have to give it two, um, two, two uh, variables. The first one is the, the column that has the true, the true value, which in this case is diversity. Um, and then the second thing that we have to give it is the, the, um, the column that has the probability that that model predicts that uh, the, the variable there. So let's call that, uh, or so that one is called uh, uh, predicted high. So we have, now we have three ROC curves in this data and we can, um, there's an auto plot method for this. Uh, you can, it's just data so you can do whatever you want with it. But we have, uh, let's look at this here. Um, so the, um, so there, they're all very close to each other here. It was um, which one had the which one had the um, better the better it was the tree the tree um, <clears throat> had the better let's see so the tree here has the better. Um, uh, one of one of these metrics, so that's interesting to look at and see and understand. So we can see how these act. The k-means one is looking a little funky in some of these ways, and I don't know that that looks a little. It's good to look at this and be able to understand because some of these look do look a little weird up there. Yeah. All right. So let's say let's go back up here 
and notice. And so let's say that we are interested. We want to, we want our use case is such that we want um, high specificity. And so for us, that means um, let's decide we want to use. Um, the logistic regression model. That's going to be the best choice for us. So the, we're going to wrap up. The final thing we're going to do is we are going to um, uh, 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 look at our test data. So we're going to wrap up by predicting against the test data. So we're going to take the, that fit. Remember when we when we predicted on the um, or when we fit to all the training data, and we can predict use a predict, um, and we're going to say new data. So the new data that we're going to now predict against is is the testing data. So, but we can't just, you know, we don't just put the testing data in it straight away. We have to do the same pre-processing to the testing data that we did to the, um, to the um, training data here. So this is um, this is how we, we so we can bake it. We bake the recipe with the new data being the test data, and we want the. Um, the probabilities out so we get something that looks like this so for all of the testing data here is the predicted probability that's a high minority university the predicted probability that's a low minority university and let's um, add on a column here let's call it truth <clears throat> and that will be from the uh, test data it is the um, it is the diversity column so we can see uh, like this one it looks like it got wrong, but a lot of these it's getting right, um, and so forth. So what we can do is um, then we can say, okay, um, we could we could do ROC, um, AUC, and we do say truth, truth comma predict underscore high, and so this gives us okay on our last like now before we end like what do we get for um, uh, our, our, um, on our test data. And let's remember what did we get when we, when we got this. So we can say, we can say, uh, this is the thing we're comparing to. So we, we are, we have uh, pretty closely estimated the performance of how we are going to get this. And I'm, and so we are able, and we can also do the same thing for sensitivity or specificity if that's what we're interested in doing. Okay, so we did it. We used the Tidy Models framework um, to train uh, predictive models for this Tidy Tuesday data set on college tuition and the diversity of student bodies at um, uh, colleges in the United States. And we, um, uh, uh, we showed how to address some common issues that we run into um, when modeling using data pre-processing steps and the recipes package. And we um, also talked about uh, resampling as a method for evaluating models and uh, how to use different kinds of uh, metrics uh, to, uh, to decide which models would be the ones that we would want to use. So uh, thank you for watching and I hope this was helpful and I will see you next time.